You're listening to Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, you uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh, Stephen being my um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer, sort of given to us when we first started on uh, XFM. Um, and uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? Why are we doing a podcast for, for, for no money? Is there um, no money? No. It's free, isn't it? It's free download. But this, this is the, this, yeah, this is what I'm, I'm here to answer. Mm. It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Well, people, they go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the jungles about, and things. And yeah. help out little sort of endangered Dian species. Dian Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Dian Fossey of the, of the, the, of the Manchester of, scene. Of, <laughs> the, of the, uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me, because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I, wa I want to see it through. Look at the way he's looking at us through the glass. Mm. Look at that, he's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this, um, podcast, or bodcast, as I'm going to call it in, um, his honour. Little round-headed bod-type freak. If you're not familiar with bod, we can maybe put up a picture of bod, the popular cartoon kids character. Go to rickygervais.com and you'll see a picture of Carl and a picture of bod. And you draw your own oh. conclusions as to the likeness. Carl, what do you think about all this? That's all right. Are you excited by this new technology? What? Bodcasts? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we, that you need to... Yeah, to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I know, yeah. you, you were, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you, or any of the MP3 things, you're concerned? Uh, it's, I'm warming to it, but... This is what's amazing about Carl, even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's, he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him <laughs> and we're, take, we're trying to ingratiate him in the, uh, in the gang, trying yeah. to pass him off as someone from the modern day. No, oh, no, yeah. but, but my thing with, with iPods is, now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need. <laughs> and now we're just messing about. They said that in 1900. Someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented. They what? said that in 1900. And how wrong were they? No, but what, what came out, what, at what point, what was invented in that year where they went, right, that's it now? What, well, what did they invent in 1900 that, that made them go, we've, we've done it all now? Well, just think, think a little bit, right? The 20th century. Think what happened in the 20th century. Go on. Well, cars, planes. Yeah, but is that a good thing? Planes and that. Do you need to? Do you need a plane really? Wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be, instead of travelling about? War. Why? War. Well, look, wars, wars happening, isn't it? Because everyone's saying, well, now we can fly. We'll go over there. So I, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the aeroplane. Not like, not like there is today. Right. But what I'm saying is. The more the the world's got smaller on it, everyone's saying that, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the way I was saying to you the other day, uh, you know, we, we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday. And then they go, oh, I die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> 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 so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place? A lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yep. Yeah. yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, well, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking. It just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far to You're see it. You're absolutely right. So uh, there you go then. The telly was the twentieth century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So where Some would you stuff. where would you stop then? You'd stop making stuff now. Stop inventing stuff right now. Or do you well, think we could carry on for another five years, see what comes up, and then just draw a line under it all? Well, but, again, uh, we, we're just messing about, and but I... But there's still things to do, isn't there? I mean, I, I know, I could throw things up, you could always go, oh, that's great, but, you know, a cure for cancer, a cure for AIDS. Yeah, but d should we, should we mess with that? What do you mean? Because there's too, there's too many people in the world as it is, isn't there? So, that's a way of controlling it, so that, you know, like, look at London, right? It's overpopulated, 
rent keeps going up because there's more and more people surviving, right? If you let them die, it's going to even itself out. See, I was saying to someone the other day about maybe we should look at, if we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, you know, like, the the way that, you know, we we have kids and stuff. If it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it is if man and woman, right, they sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about 78, I think, by that point. <laughs> so specific. Yeah, 78, no, 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 yeah. but seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm gonna do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not gonna do it. No. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your hips have come off. You've, you've done it all now, so I've had, I've had my innings. Yeah. And then you die, right? So, say if everyone had that, they lived to be 78. Mm. But then, just as you die... They give you the bumps. You get... <laughs> y you have a little baby inside you, and as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, How is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think... I mean, what? I've never heard such drivel. You say, you're saying that, but if, if, if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> That's, that's what annoys me. I know it is, Carl. He never would. No, He'd what? never say it. That's the point. I, if I, you I never don't, say it, if you never I say it. I don't understand what you're talking about there. What, how, how, how was it? How is there a little baby in a 78 year old? No, year what I'm saying is it's like an apple where <laughs> the apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it and, and the apple goes and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what that's I, what happens. But that is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right and centre. It's, it's, it's controlled so that as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, stop. H whose responsibility is Look, this? if you don't want to do but it, we won't do it, but is I'm it just... Is supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way? We, we live that <laughs> way? Or is like, this a scientific experiment? I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round. So we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you. <laughs> and there's loads of people here. And, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy. And you can't move and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them. And, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who the looks baby? after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives <laughs> yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, one, it's, that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. But, but thank it you for it. The worst <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of, it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. Yeah, this is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just <laughs> yes. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of guy. In fact, I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know when people die normally. Everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever. But then there's this new life brought in. It's almost like a bad news. But, good but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> but what I'm saying ready is... to go, just add water. I, right. I mean... Who it, looks that, after son of Gladys? Look, look. There is no theory here. There's no... Th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is, though, the body's always changing, in it? From caveman to now, or whatever. In some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like, I read the other day yeah. about how, um, they're saying, do you know how, like, they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one... I say, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in a, in a pub, right? Mm. And I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. 
Unlikely, but go on. And, uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right, and she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me and I look up and I look round she's looking at me. Right. And they're saying that's a new sense that, that they found out from, like, you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're um, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since, but, since, like, man and dinosaur was knocking about. But it could be, it could be, you know, peripheral vision. It could be a footstep stopped and usually when someone's footstep stopped, they're, 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 they've stopped. No, they've explained you, I, I it. I think it's safe to assume that, you know, that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explained I mean, it. you just know that there's probably going to be someone there if they, you look right. They said it's from the time when, like, caveman was, like, wandering about and he'd go, hang on a minute. And he'd look round there's a dinosaur there or whatever and he'd, right, he'd leg it. Right, this is, this is nonsense. One, one, not... I hate it when people use the term when caveman was wandering <laughs> round. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh they used to live together, yeah. Oh that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, what, you don't believe us? What, you don't believe us because you, you've seen- Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. <laughs> yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a million years BC. Year, a million years BC or something. A yeah, million yeah. years BC. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but- She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact. But why, why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have dogs now, in a way? He's watching the Flintstones. He's, the Flintstones. he's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. When he puts out the saber tooth tiger, yeah, and then yeah, he and he, and he, and he mixes in. his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, ju I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why did you say that? Why do you think there must have been? There a must crossover have been point? because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. I, exactly. Why? Why? Why didn't Hitler meet Nero? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? There must have been a cross. They must have met somewhere. <laughs> they must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. Well, I mean, are you are you telling me that Ken Dodd has never met Genghis Khan? <laughs> they must have bumped into. S I can't believe it. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> oh, you're listening to Ricky Gervais with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Coming up after the ads, Monkey News. What ads? No ads, no? <laughs> no, we're not, there's nothing here, there's no records. We just gotta keep on talking. Okay. Which is not. We could do our own ads. <laughs> okay. Bring tea for the tiller man, steak for the sun. Out now to own on DVD, Ricky Gervais's and Steve Merchant's award-winning extras. With Ross Kemp. Oh, zippy. With Les Dennis. Put your ass away, Les. I don't really know! And Kate Winslet. Oh, this nun outfit makes me talk dirty! Out now on DVD. Extras. Did you like Flannel Wars? <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais book for, for kids with pictures of made up creatures in of different colours? Well, <laughs> if you did, there's, <laughs> there's more of them now in the more new Flannel Wars. <laughs> which is also by Ricky Gervais, drawings by his mate. Out now. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. You're listening to Ricky Gervais with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, now time for one of our regular features, Monkey News. Do the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that, Monkey News! Right, what, what we're doing here is, right, is, uh, just giving you a bit of, bit of monkey news that's, that's gone on, right, where <laughs> a monkey's been involved in it. Good little story in that. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the one that went into space? The uh, first, the first sort of thing they ever sent up there before man did it and all that. You see, this is what annoys me with it, really. Armstrong gets all the, all the glory, but do you know who went up there before, before him? A monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Dog but, went up first. But what was the monkey called? I don't know. No, sure. Okay, so it's not the most informed news bulletin. The dog was called Laika. Was it? Yeah, they couldn't get it back there. They sent it up there. Did a few tests and stuff, and they couldn't get it back. They weren't they weren't prepared to bring the capsule back yet. Brilliant. We could all do that. So is that a, is that a you know is that a good mission? Well, I just think it was seeing what if it if if the mission itself killed it, but they didn't have the technology because of course it couldn't it couldn't fly the capsule back, which it has to be manned to bring right, it. Well, this this was this was the next one up then, right? So the dog must have gone first, and then they went right. We made an error there, right? Get the monkey in. And what happened is they taught it um, what buttons to hit at the time that it needed to hit them, and 
and the way they did this was like give it bananas it was like hit the red button and it hit the red button they'd give it a banana right and they go right reverse is the green one hit the green one and then they do that and go there's a banana and then they go right hit reverse and it go and get a banana right. hit the red so it was taking commands on like headphones right but how are they giving is that it the how banana? you learn to do radio <laughs> how are they giving it the banana what do you mean no, oh. this is before it went. You, do, you wouldn't right. just go and put a monkey in it and go, there you go, get on with it. They'd sort of put him in one of them capsules that you get. Yeah. And they were th on headphones. I, I don't believe this happened. Well, I'm <laughs> telling you the story now, so the monkey I don't think they trained it to do anything. I think they sent it up there and he put electrodes coming out of it to no, see what... what it uh, wasn't any of that. They did a thing like they do. Like, right. Like they can with animals. If you give something, uh, you know, like a treat, you can teach it how to do it. It's just like a dog, isn't it? When it's you called Pavlovian conditioning. However... That was to see if it would salivate or go over to yeah, a particular well, corner, yeah. not if it could control a spacecraft. <laughs> next one up. It's the next one up. It, as far as the, the monkey's not sat there going, oh, I'm a bit under pressure here, it's a rocket. All that's knowing is, I'm getting a banana if he hit that button. That's all the monkey's thinking about. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't, but <laughs> well, billions whatever. of space but dollars. But how can they be sure that it's going to press the button at the right moment? Because it's got headphones on. <laughs> They're telling it. It's not like just, you have now. It's not like willy nilly. It's not just like pop it in there and see who's that. What's to stop it from just hitting it any old time? Because it's a monkey and it's, it's not a human. Because it's trained now. Oh, anyway, it's trained. So it's listen, fully trained. Yeah. Go so on. what happened is anyway. Oh, this is absolute rubbish. They pop the monkey in there. Yeah. It's got its headphones on. They're going mm. right. Hit the green one, and uh, I think there's something there that a little banana comes out to keep the same. <laughs> no, you're making this up. I'm not, it's the same. There's no way that they made uh, a, a right, spacecraft so, so can, that had a <laughs> banana dispenser. Right, There's so, no way in this world that they made a spacecraft that could go into outer mm, space, right, so what, so manned so by a monkey mm, with a banana dispenser. So you're saying that it's easy to send something up to space but you don't believe there's a little banana machine? Right, okay, so in your world, in your world, uh, there's this, there's a monkey and it's been conditioned and there's so a little monkey dispenser, a mon uh, sorry, monkey dispenser, a, yeah, a banana, dispenser, banana dispenser, yeah. dispenser, right, so it comes to the launch day, monkeys, monkeys sat in there, uh, everyone's ready, bananas are stocked up and all the rest of it, they go, right, hit the green button. <laughs> Right, and the rocket goes off and what have you. No, they would not make the monkey launch the rocket. Carl, so, you are you are living in a, so, a cartoon world. So the rocket goes off, right? <laughs> this is absolute bollocks. It's all going well. You are, you, I mean, I don't know it's what all, you're going to... It's, it's not going well. It's going There's well. no way a monkey launched it's a going, rocket. There's no way a monkey launched a rocket, so you idiot. it's all going on, so they're going, hit the left button and, it's, and it goes a little the bit left. left. Right, oh, so well-known spacecraft command. This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is what happened in Bio 13. Hit the left button. So it, you it, are, oh, it you goes are. left. Yeah, it goes left. So it goes left. And it's, it's going away. Left! It, it's, it goes going left! Yeah. No, the moon. So You're it going goes, right. It goes, it goes for the moon. Everything. Everything's going well. Right. Uh, they get up there. It does whatever it does. It reverse. It comes back. <laughs> right? <laughs> So then, you are so, honestly, you are brain dead. So it's you are one of the most stupid people that I would rather have mm. the monkey drive right, listen, me home than you. So the thing is, so it lands back. Yeah. It does a good job and everything. It gets out, um, and this it's is this sick is, of bananas. This is where this is where it turns a bit sad because after it done that mission, yeah. right? Because <laughs> it happened and it, and it was all safe and everything. The next one would have been to send man, right? So. The monkey enjoyed it, and it was like, well, I want to do it again, right? But they were like... So how did they know that? How did they know just, he wanted to do it? Just the way it looked and what have you, it was like... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> just the way it looked! So, you are a maniac. So the thing is, though, right, so after it had done that, it was on such a high, right, <laughs> yeah. it, could, it could never get that high again. There was nothing. Drugs. There was nothing that it could do. Went on tour, did it? It, did, it, it sort of ended up killing itself. <laughs> Because it could never, never get that buzz that it right, got. Right, that was absolute bollocks. None of that is true, except <laughs> they sent a monkey into space. And I'll, and I'll, um, I'll check that. Absolute drivel. So, it, in your mind, it committed suicide. It, had a, it went on a crazy bender of drinking drugs and women. And like then, it, do, it does happen, you and hear it about it. it was found in a motel room. <laughs> right, do you know, like, you don't believe in, like, scary stuff just like you know ghosts no, i believe in scary stuff i don't believe no, in well, things that are totally logical yeah ghosts vampires no anything made up by man 
Well, there was, some, there was something in the paper the other day about a vampire, and they found one. They dug something up. It was in the paper? And, oh, um, it's true then. It's definitely true. But it's we'll leave that, then. but we'll leave that, because you're just gonna do that, so it doesn't matter. No, come on, well, let's come go on, on, quickly, tell us about you found no, it's just that they found, they found a body in a coffin yeah. with a, a bit weird. of wood through its heart and a knife in its mouth. But if you don't believe it, <laughs> then what's the point? Pirate. Well, that was a vampire pirate. But that's definitely proof of a vampire then, of course, and not some grotesque murder. Yeah. That's definitely proof of if a vampire. If it was found, if it was found, if it wasn't, one, if it wasn't right, made hang up. Hang on a minute, hang two, on a minute. As far as I'm aware, they, re, when you put the, the thing through their heart, they just turn into dust. As, and and also, biting. all the, all their victims get, get their own life back. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's right, and here was the second bit. Yeah. Somebody had dug it up, yeah. got the heart, blended it, burnt it, pop it, popped it in some water, mm. drank it, and they're in prison now. Now, if it wasn't dodgy stuff, why are they in prison? Because they're, they're, they're mental, because they dug up a body, liquidised its heart, <laughs> burnt it and drank it. <laughs> that's, that's why, why they're in prison. prison. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. your answer. Right. <laughs> but anyway, that isn't what I'm talking about, right? But I met, I met, uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, and who's he? Which one's he? He's, uh, is he, is he a medium he can contact the dead, is that right? He just chats to him and that, sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So mm. he said, what do you want to know? I said, just, just something weird. So he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country. And, uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have? Where they used to, they used to like leave their own cup knocking like about. Like a tankard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was, there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody- Tankard, like, let's use a tankard if we've established right, yeah, that. Tankard, yeah. Because you're the only mug in this story. Right. Nice. Believing it all. High five. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So this right. tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going, oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about, right? Mm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny, small tankard in a pub. That must be a real grind. <laughs> so, so every t they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> So <laughs> they must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that. And they were like, oh, "What's the connection here? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what's the connection here?" Oh god. So anyway, so call they, Australia. We've run out. So they, so they, they sort of someone <laughs> notices and they go, "You know, it's a bit weird. It's it's that cup, right?" So they get tankered. A, they, they get, so it's that it's that tankard and that. So um, they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, "Look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here." This this tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, "Leave it with me." He gets his um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, "Right, not a problem. Don't worry about it." He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? <laughs> what? Dies in a crash on the way home because he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, and I meant to go. That's amazing. Derek Akora, he told me. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I have, I have, I have, I have no opinion of that story. Other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure. It's of. not just them, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. So you, you, when you're you, when you're telling me um, miracles and strange things outside coincidence, you may as well be telling me about the tooth fairy and the Easter bunny because they're equal to me. That it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. So what what would it take though for you to go? Oh, I, I, I'm actually a believer now. But but what you're saying is you, you're. I can't answer that question because I'd have to base. Um, my beliefs on some of your premises, which I can't do. Uh, it's like it's like you saying, but what if you found out that two and two equaled five? I, I, I can't. It's a necessary truth that it doesn't. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and fundamentally uh, uh, disagree with what I think twoism is, twoness and fiveness. And you, it, you've never been in a situation though where you've gone. This room feels a bit weird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Could be something knocking about or. But th but that's 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 a different question. I I, I could go into a really rough looking pub and think, this this isn't good because it's 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 no, based like on a, induction then. Because I mean I mean like you know if you've been to Cornwall on holiday and stayed somewhere and you've gone, do you know what? I'm sure, so much died in here. I'm sure so much died everywhere. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of like I I I've got a mate right who uh, is is living in this big stately home, right. And what it Why is, is he living there? He's, 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 he's paying £100 a month, right? 
and it's almost like he's being a security man. All oh, right. But he's not. He's not. He, he doesn't sit out the door with that on and everything. He just goes about his life, but he bases most of his work in this stately home. So right? what is it like a, a like a, a housekeeper, like, like a, a house sitting? A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, it's mass. It's 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 bigger than Buckingham Palace. This place, right? So what is it? A billionaire that's gone away or something? I, th I think it's some sort of. Uh, I think he said something about a, a viscount or something. Right. right. He said it's he owns this place. He's living in America. This place he owns, but it's falling to bits. Wow. And he's worried that people are going to go in there and squat and what have you. So he said to me, mate, you know, there was an advert, advert in the paper, he doesn't know him, advert in the paper saying, do you want to live in a big house, 100 quid or whatever? And uh, he, he went and had a look, right? And, and he's living in there now, he pays £100 a month. There's about 80 rooms. Gee. And uh, it's this big stately house and what have you. And I went, I went down there, he said, oh, come down and have a look, right? And from outside, you go, oh, this is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Manor Born or something. You go, this is this is impressive. But then when you get in, it's like it's a wreck. Uh, it's right? just falling apart because they can't afford. Well, it's just been left. No one's no one's doing any vacuuming up or anything. There's like rat poison everywhere. Um, like windows are smashed, doors kicked in. That's a real shame. Mm. What, why is it? Is it? Is I don't think he's it, doing his job, is he? Is it because it because it would cost like millions to do up or well, something? Well, apparently it'd be like I, I think they're going to have it done up, but it's it's going to cost like eighty million, right? So anyway, so that's I'm, a big house. That's a big house. So we get we go to the pub and what have you. I've got like a little torch, and um, we, we're wandering around looking in all these different rooms, right? And I'm asking him, what's what, why is, what, how's it got in this state? Do you know what I mean? If someone's had it, why, why, why have they let it get to this state? And he was saying how, you know, it was like a, a mental home right. at one point. And um, it was like a drug thing as well. People who had had problems with drugs, they popped them out there because it's in the middle of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you needed drugs or anything, forget it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, so that's straight away. Do you know, like, have you ever been in a, a hospital when it's been shut down or a school when there's no kids in it and there's that sort of bad atmosphere? Of like weirdness, yeah, right. For so, the sake of argument, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we're wandering about, and I say, "Oh yeah, what's in this room?" Right, and and we go in, and all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall, and there was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, Ooh. right. And I said, "What's this here?" So I wandered over, right, got right up close to it, and somebody had wrote it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody had wrote it. Oh, some. <laughs> Somebody had wrote it. I love this. He could do it. Imagine doing Jack and Hori. Am I okay? Right, go on. Yeah, go on. So, sorry. So sorry. There's, sorry. there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it and it says, flies, right? With an arrow. Flies, like, flies this way. Yep. Right? So I think that's, that's a bit weird. <laughs> so I follow the arrow, right? Which goes to this corner where there's a shelf. About 3,000 dead flies on it. Oh, my God. Condom stuck on the top. <laughs> That's, right. that's weird, isn't that it? That is weird. That is that weird, is weird. Right? So I'm looking at that, and there's there's loads of stuff on the floor and that, bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? And it had, uh, like, in biro and that, it looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had, uh, uh something like, need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets, blah, blah, all this, like, all stuff for, like... And I turned it over, right, and it said, none of this now needed, baby dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> now that's weird, isn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about when you get a bad vibe. You go, that's that's who's been in here. <laughs> so um, I, d I don't actually oh, understand God. what point you're trying to make, <sighs> Carl. Just because <sighs> it's it, it, who's written that? Who's been in that room? Who's been in that state? <laughs> and then straight away your mind starts going, oh, I'm getting bad vibes in here. But Carl, didn't you just tell us that this was once occupied by drug addicts and mentals, to yeah. use your word? Yeah. So don't, haven't you put two and two together and thought that was probably who wrote it? That doesn't mean it's paranormal or ghostly. You walk into a building, it's a big, terrifying, empty house. It's terrifying in as much as it's cold and dark and draughty and a little bit spooky in this sort of illustrative sense. And insecure. Yeah, you're a bit nervous because you- and you know, it's got this sort of- it's got- it's bad vibe. It's just based on the fact that- Your mate's in charge! <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> 
I mean, yes, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along. Because you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh my God, I'm Carl Pilkington. And hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. <laughs> that is weird. Flies and a Johnny equals badness. <laughs> the, t- the flies and the condom was weird. It's now. weird. I don't know but, that it's but but the note. The note. Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that. <laughs> Reading it by torchlight. You must have been terrified. It's a bit. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed for listening. If you'd like to get in touch with us, either myself or Ricky, or you've got something to send to Carl, then you can email us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I'd just like to uh, say thank you to both The Guardian for sponsoring this and Positive Internet for hosting this uh, podcast. Both great. They, the guys at Positive Internet know exactly what they're doing. They're my kind of people, as is The Guardian. Can I just, sorry, I just... Well, you, you weren't contractually obliged to say that, were you? It just sounded... No, it's, it's what I think. It's just what I think. Right. It's just I've not heard you mention either of them before in that way. It just sounded... Oh, you're joking. I, I both love The Guardian and Positive Internet.